Hello, my name is Daniel Hendy, and today I'm going to give you five things you need to consider before you build your next app. This is one of the most important points I try to drill into my clients before we begin any new project, especially if they don't have any experience and especially if they had a previously bad experience so that they don't create the same problems over and over again. But before we continue, make sure you like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest content. Now the software world is always evolving, especially mobile app development. In the past five years, things have changed dramatically. When it first started, there were very specific ways you had to develop your mobile apps and there weren't really many choices on how to do that. Now you have templates, you have components, you have frameworks, you have hybrid apps, you have many options. And today we're going to go over all these options to make sure you select what's right for your business and your project. The first point you want to consider are the platforms you want to support. Now, obviously you want to deal with Android and iOS because they're the most dominant too. However, you also want to anticipate the devices these platforms will be on, phone and tablet. Whether it's an iPad or an Android tablet, they sort of give you a different dynamic on how you want to build your app because of the device dynamics and the specs on those devices, the larger screens, and certain limitations that may not be on your tablet versus your phone. The other thing you want to think about is something called PWAs. These are progressive web apps. Now, more and more people are accessing your mobile app and the web via their phone. So progressive web apps gives you, gives you a easier barrier to entry whenever somebody's exploring your product, as well as being able to stumble upon it uh, via a Google search. So if they're on their phone searching for a product and they stumble upon your app, a PWA will allow them to enter into your app, engage with your app, either fully or partially, and also give them a prompt to say, would you like a more native experience by downloading your app? So something to always think about. Point number two, the team that you want to build your app. Now, like we said, we have iOS and Android, and so these are written, uh, these types of apps are written in two different languages, and so you need an iOS developer and an Android developer. Now, you may find a developer that can actually do both, but if you have one developer doing both, then it's just gonna take them double the time. If you have uh, uh, two separate developers, it's gonna cost you the same amount, amount of money, but you can make them uh, work in parallel and go to market much faster. Now, the third component is a web full stack developer. Now, even if you opted out of going the PWA route, you still need to host your app's data somewhere in the cloud. Now, what does that mean? Unless your app is just a calculator where uh, I'm just doing a really quick function and that's it, it's not really saving data anywhere, there's no communication between multiple users, you want to make sure that uh, data resides in a secure, scalable location in the cloud. So for example, when your users register, where do their username and passwords go and get saved? It doesn't stay on the phone, it goes to some database in the cloud. When your users communicate with each other, when they give you ratings, when you release new updates, these are all hosted in an infrastructure in the cloud. And so you need a full stack web developer to create the infrastructure that you need with the API so that your mobile app can access this data. And you also want a designer to make sure that everything looks good. Eye candy is the most selling point for most apps. It's not necessarily all of the functionality. If it looks pretty, it engages your users, it's extremely important, especially with this competitive landscape. You're also going to need a QA person to make sure that your software is tested, whether it's your backend infrastructure or your mobile application, and it's tested on multiple browsers, multiple devices, multiple operating systems to make sure that it covers all your bases. You're also going to need a project man manager, whether that's you or somebody else, to make sure everybody's hitting their deadlines and uh, held accountable. Before we continue, leave me a comment below on what you think is the most important platform to support, iOS first or Android first, assuming one leads and the other follows. Do you think tablets are extremely important to support or not? I'd love to hear your answers in the comments below. The third point you need to think about is your infrastructure, where that's being hosted. Well, we said you have a team member that needs to build this infrastructure. You're probably not going to do it in some servers in your office unless you're back in the 1990s, which good luck for you. So what you want to do is partner up with a hosting service that can host your app and its infrastructure with the correct security and scalability and reliability that your app needs. The fourth thing you want to consider are services that currently exist out there. 
So for example, there are already cloud services out there that you could integrate with. There are already analytical services that you can integrate with. There are push notifications, there's authentication servers and so on. So before you go off and build these services and solutions for your app, make sure that you shop around and see if there's a service provider that already exists so you don't have to spend your hard earned money reinventing the wheel. Point number five is to make sure you consider all the tools available to you. Just like we talked about services and service providers where you need to shop around first before you build them. There's a lot of tools that'll help you build your app from templates to components to designs that exist already out there that you could just purchase and use. That'll speed up the process of your app development and give you more time to focus on the business logic that makes your app different than the rest. Another thing you want to consider is a hybrid platform. So there are services out there that allow you to write code once that work for iOS, Android, and PWA so that you don't have to hire three different developers to, to develop the three different apps. You don't have to have one app leading uh, and the others following where you create a new feature on iOS and then a month later it's on Android and a month later it's on PWA. You develop it once and it's out there. Now, you may ask yourself, why isn't everybody working on a hybrid platform. The truth of the matter is, it's probably not the best platform if you're developing your next augmented reality app, if you're developing something that needs really high frame rate, like a game. Uh, it will work, you can make it work if, if, uh, if you choose to do so. The last tool set that you want to consider are rapid app development tools. Now, these are tools that will go one step above hybrid apps and give you tools that you could rapidly develop all in one single IDE, an integrated developer environment. And so what that does uh, is it allows you to build these systems really quickly, host them and get them out to market as fast as possible. Now, you have systems like, like Kony, Kenve, OutSystems or BuildFire. BuildFire to me is the best option. Why? It has a lot of out-of-the-box functionality that you could deal with without having to code anything whatsoever. And if you wanted something very specific to your use case and you needed custom development, you can get your developers to develop on it with uh, code that they already know versus some of these uh, uh, other systems that are great. However, you sort of need to learn them first before you're able to develop on them. And there's not a lot of out-of-the-box functionality. It's more of rapid development tools that you sort of still need to be a developer to work on. So make sure you find the tool that's best for you. So before you begin, make sure that you assess what platforms you want to support, what are, what's the team look like that's going to build that platform. Look for services that exist today so you don't have to spend your hard-earned money and time building those services. Make sure that there's an infrastructure to back it up and you partner with a hosting company that can scale with you. And make sure you look at the tool sets that'll help you go to market much faster. From templates, components, to rapid app development tools uh, like BuildFire, make sure you take a look at those and see what's right for you and your company. Good luck with your next endeavor. Let's build great things together. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with our latest content. If you do so, you'll also be entered into a raffle where you can win some BuildFire merchandise. Thanks for watching.